I feel like we don't know who we really are until we reach a low point in our lives. How do we respond to being nearly broke, uncomfortable with this situation? I had two cases in 2022. One of them was when I was almost going broke traveling the reservations in South Dakota. And the other one was when I was uncomfortable with a living situation in Arizona. How did I respond to both situations? Like one of the Lakota elders said, I am a runner. I always want to be on the move. And since I'm afraid of confronting people, I ghost them instead of holding them accountable. I feel like a runner and a ghoster. And those are two aspects of me I can say I consider, you know, negative. When I was traveling the reservation, I had money saved up and I wanted to explore to start a delivery business for the reservation to help out the people there. But I was impatient, you know, I always wanted to be driving somewhere. Money ended up dry, you know, drying up. And uh, how did I respond to that? How did I respond to being almost broke? I let a young uncle keep my second car and we ran back home. I just went back home. And my mom was very angry because I left my second car to someone that, you know, that's not a family member. And, you know, something really bad could happen. And it would be under basically me if something happened with that car. One of my uh, blood uncles, my actual uncle, you know, he drove me to take my car back. And I had to deceive, uh, you know, the Lakota uncle to, you know, get my car. You know, I, I ended up getting a tow truck to bring my second car to a hotel and uh, I was stuck in a hotel for four days waiting for another truck to bring me another key and that four days when I was stuck in a hotel I was really just reflecting on my adventure you know what did I learn how was I manipulated what, what lessons can I learn from this adventure that won't screw me over down the line and, um, you know, even today, I just, I don't want to badmouth a specific person. You know, I just have the hope they will improve and, um, you know, life will be better for them. And when it comes to Arizona, I ended up binge eating and, uh, you know, just chugging diet soda after diet soda. I was seeking pleasure during discomfort. And the only good thing going at the time was I started going to the gym just because, oh shoot, I gained all this weight, man. Since I gained all this weight, I gotta go to the gym, you know, to get muscle. If I gain weight, it has to be muscle. That's basically what my mind was thinking at the time. The people I lived with, the, the roommates, um, you know, they're people I knew from high school, but just, uh, I couldn't fit in with them anymore. You know, I don't drink, um, I don't drink alcohol, I don't smoke, I don't like eating takeout, but uh, you know, I was just surrounded by that. And when I got in a car accident, that was the perfect excuse for me to just pack my shit and drive all the way back home. And, you know, I hide a lot of my BS, a lot of, you know, my negative aspects, you know, and I'm afraid to just confront people. You know, I just want to help only if I have the ability to. You know, there will be a time where one doesn't have a car to run away or any money. What happens then? You know, and I'm just grateful for these low points, turning negatives into positives. You know, I'm grateful that I traveled throughout Montana and South Dakota because I realized anything is possible with the money. You know, I met a homeless Lakota in a Rapid City. I befriended him. I helped him get his ID using my mailbox address. And, you know, a week or two after meeting him, I ended up taking him to Maui for a few days. And that was, you know, the whole that whole thing is a long story within itself. But, you know. I just trying to prove that like anything is possible you know paying it forward anything is possible with the money and I realized through my interactions with older uncles you know um, like one of the uncles I met from uh, Wundanit you know he told me I am a runner you know and right now I consider that a negative aspect of me but I'm just thinking in my head how can I turn that into my li uh, livelihood you know a business and throughout this whole process I was able to return to Christ and not use the Bible just to fit my political beliefs. And I'm also grateful for Arizona because through that whole process, I learned about the gym, about car wash memberships, making sure to prioritize the appearance, 
and I got introduced to self-improvement books. And throughout all my interactions in Arizona, I was able to meet elders of my blood uncle's religion, uh, the LDS Church. And through that whole process, I just, it was good to meet them, get to know them. But um, throughout the whole process, it was good that, you know, I just don't understand the LDS religion. And uh, I do not believe in it, you know, because I don't understand it. And I'm grateful for all the different characters I met that year in 2022 because I never felt so happy and free in my life but also angry and scared in a small time span. You know, my emotions were going up all the way down. And to visit the position I'm in now, you know, working in sales, going to the gym, making YouTube videos in different locations, talking about self-improvement, is because of all the people I met this year. And I hope you can turn your low points into positives, being grateful for, you know, what you've been through. And I hope you learned something from this video you can implement. God bless you, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.